Okay, so I was just walking out talking to y'all. And I'm going to upload this in two parts. And that part's going to be extremely short. And I don't care. Because I was saying some good stuff. And I'm not going to start over. So anyway, because I'm not sure what all I said. Um, but I'm talking about when you have tough times. How do you get through tough times? And I was talking about how... Um, what I'm going to tell you is the truth. It is the only thing that's going to work. And um, you can try everything else. But it won't work. And even if it does work, it'll be temporary or it will not solve the ultimate problem of your problems. And that is, you, and there's certain things I was just talking about that you can do to like make your life better, like eat right, exercise, get plenty of sleep and drink plenty of water. Those are things that you can do to help your health, help your wealth and help your well being. But there's things that will hit you in life. Um, Jesus put it this way, you're going to have trouble. Now that's, that's as you, he's declaring a truth to you, not because he wants you to have trouble. He never wanted us to have the troubles we have, but because we rebelled against him or Eve rebelled against him. And really it's not just Eve y'all. We've been rebelling against God ever since. Uh, sometimes we'd be good, but for the most part, we are rebels and we want to be independent and do our own thing and have our own way and our own path and our own dreams and our own desires. And that's exactly what screwed us up. And people say, well, it's not, Beth, you're saying something wrong to say that it's, you know, you shouldn't have your own dreams and desires. No, I'm not. God can give you dreams and desires and they will appear to be yours. And um, you have to ask him, is this something you would have me do? That's the only reason and way to know the difference. And I b believe he'll impress upon your heart what's yours, your agenda, and your doings, and what's his. And also, if you have a dream, you can always present it to the Lord and say, Lord, this is something I'd like to do. Is this something you would want for me? Because what God wants for you, the God who made you, the God who can save you, wants better for you than you even want for yourself. And he knows more for you and what's better the right thing for you more than you know for yourself. You may think that you want to be the top marketing dog of an organization. And he may think, well, I, I've put a creativity in you and that's what you're feeling. But what I want you to do is use that to help stop human trafficking. And in this organization, I'm going to connect you with. You just never know what God's up to is my point. So you have to develop a relationship with him. And so if you want to know how to survive in this world, which is not the, the, the end all. It's just because we're fleshly and spirit beings. Uh, Jesus was too. Um, because he was God and man. And so he has the Holy Spirit. And we have a spirit. And the Holy Spirit can come live within us. He understands that we are dual natured. Um, no, I'm sorry, that we're human natured and we have a spirit. He actually is God. That's a different nature. We're one nature, man. And, um, but we have, how do I describe this? We have two parts. We have, we have flesh and spirit, but we're one nature. We're mankind, homo sapien. He has two natures. He was man and God. He still had two parts, the spirit side of himself and the fleshly side of himself. So he does understand that part of us. And this world is temporary. He is going to make a new heaven and a new earth that will outdo anything he did before. I sometimes wonder if what that really means in translation is he's going to make it anew. In other words, the same beautiful world but he's going to destroy all the sin and all the effects of sin, not just on man and animals, but all of nature, all of earth, and make a new heaven and a new earth in that way. And yet it will be familiar, but perfect again. It was perfect, and we blew it by wanting to do things our own way instead of trusting him and listening to his voice. So this is what I'm going to say to you and to myself. If you want to make it through tough times, if you want to be able to endure the hard things of this world, and they will come. It's not a will they. They will. They absolutely will. You must...
take care of your relationship with God. You must develop your relationship with Jesus Christ, your Savior. If you don't have a relationship with Him, you're in much bigger trouble because get this, you are going to die. 100% everybody's going to die. For me, I'm going to tell you about why I came to Jesus. I was brought up uh, in the church at a young age. I didn't really get it. Um, I wouldn't say that the church I was in was bad, but it wasn't active in making sure that I understood it. And that's why I'm so adamant about people understanding it. Not just reading the Bible, but understanding the Bible, studying the Bible, pondering the Bible, and asking the Holy Spirit, will you show me what you mean and what you want from me so that I can please you and make you happy because you're my God and I love you and I want to know you. And what I would say is, I set out in my um, 20s, maybe even out of fear of death or just, I don't know what, but I wanted to know, was this the right God? Was there God? Was this the right God? And who was going to get me out of death? Who was going to get me out of what I deserve from what I've done with this life? And some of you may say, well, I haven't done a bad life. I'm not a bad person. Everybody, the, the concept and the standard of good is Jesus Christ. You fall short. I fall short. Everybody falls short. And if you fall short, then you are not entering the kingdom of heaven. That's why he came here and said, I will pay for your flesh with my flesh so that when you leave your flesh, your spirit comes to me and you're even going to get a new body. We won't go into that right now, but it's going to be awesome. But um, you don't always have the time you think you do to, to ponder this, y'all. You need a, a, a relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, you do. If you don't know him, you can start right now. You're not too late. You're not too stupid. You're not too unspiritual. You're not too unclean. Everybody is level at the foot of the cross. Everybody is in need of a Savior. Everybody has failed. And everybody is loved equally by Jesus. But nobody's getting in except through Jesus him. There is no other God. There is no other uh, way to God. There's not all these big ways, you know, 15 different ways. There's one way. God kept it very simple, very fair. Everybody's equal. Everybody comes in the same way. So there's not 15,000 different ways to try to figure out. And people say, well, I've got a God. He's my God. No, he is who he is. I could say, well, I'm my version of Beth. No, I am who I am. And that's what God says in Exodus 3.14 when Moses is asking him when he says when he's sending him on a on a mission, he, he says, Well when when I when they ask me who's sending me, who do I tell them is sending me? And he says, You tell them I am that I am, or just I am has sent me to you. This is my name, and it's the name to be remembered forever. Jesus, when asked when, when, and uh, that was in Exodus 3.14. In John 8.24, Jesus says, Except that you believe that I am, and some translations say, Who I say I am, you will remain in your sin. If you remain in your sin, you can't go waltzing into heaven to a perfect holy God with your sinful self. You need a Savior. So let me just say this. For those of you who think you've got time, for those of you, I had a wreck, I should have been dead. Nobody, you, know, you hear about it all the time, or disease, or all these different things that pop up, and, and, it, and it's like, you should have decided. You only have this life to make the decision. You don't get another life to make the decision. You're born into this earth once. You are here to live the life God's called you to live, and to find Him, and to make your decision for eternity. This little teeny blip on the screen for eternity. It's very important that you take this seriously. So what do you do? You ask Him. You don't have to be fancy. All prayer is is talking to God. I don't know why along the years we've made it so difficult sounding. It's not. When people use churchy talk or Bible language, there's nothing wrong with that. They've learned things from reading the Bible. And for those that also have read it, they talk in that lingo. If that leaves someone out who does not know the Word of God, well, 
start knowing the Word of God. And for those of you who do know the Word of God, remember the people around you who don't know it, don't know it. So if use terminology that's just regular talk to talk to them until they understand what the Bible has to say about that may understand your language about it. And I'm talking about things like salvation or sanctification or resurrection or edification. These words, they make sense to me. Um, I understand what the resurrection means. I understand what it means to be edified or lifted up. I understand what it means to be sanctified or my uh, to be made right. I understand what it means to have salvation, meaning I will be saved from the wrath for sin, which is death. Um, and whose wrath of it? It's not Satan's wrath. It's God's wrath. God has a wrath against sin. Sin um, and, and the enemy wants to kill you and wants to put you in hell forever. And, and God is not going to be soft on that. He's a just God, but he's a merciful God. And he's going to give you a way out. And it's Jesus Christ. He doesn't say, hey, come up with a way. Give me your strategy and let me know. He's God. He he made a plan. It's one plan. There aren't five plans. There's one plan. You can join him at any time and be a part of his plan. And he can use your life in that plan to do what he wants to have done. He knows better than you. He knows better than me. You can trust turning to him. Now, some people say, well, I can't trust him. My mother died of cancer. There's going to be diseases in this world because of the sinful state that we live in. Some diseases or um, conditions we get because of the way we live. You may get venereal disease because you sleep around. That is a direct impact. Other things like cancer, you may have done nothing to cause it, uh, except maybe if you're smoking and, and you know that leads to lung cancer, but you still keep smoking. Uh, but for there's times when children get stuff and, and, and uh, people get stuff that's taking good care of their health or they have an accident and they're very careful people. These are the things that happened because we live in a fallen world, a fallen state of the earth, and God hates it. That is why he was willing to give up his only son, the thing he loved more than anything in the world, give him up because he said, well, there is one thing I love more, you. I love you more, and I'm willing to give him up. And I'll even raise him from the dead because I'm going to raise you from the dead if you'll come through him. But there has to be a price paid for th when things are done wrong. He is a just God, but because he's merciful, he loves us so much you can't stand to be away from us. He says, but I'm going to give you a choice. I'm not going to make you. I'm not going to make you a robot. I'm going to give you a choice because I love you. And I'm going to let you choose by an act of your own free will. But you must choose. And I'm going to make sure that you know your options. Here's the option. There is only one God. There's only one way to that God. And it's, it's the same way for everybody. It's the most fair thing. It's not, you know, well, oh, that's so narrow-minded. It's not narrow-minded. It's the most fair thing I've ever heard of. Everybody comes the same way. Ain't nobody getting any better than anybody else. They all come through Jesus because everybody is not Jesus. Everybody is not perfect. We all, at some point, some people are really good livers, other people, livers, pe good living people, <laughs> and other people live awful. And God says, look, you're all still short of the standard, which is Jesus. So it doesn't matter whether you have little sins or big sins, I'll forgive you if you'll come through Jesus. And when you make him your savior, you turn your life over to him so you let him direct it. That's where the shoulds and should nots come in, and they matter because not because of what other people think. It's because of your relationship with God. Living for Him. That's why. How did I ever get on this? Because here's how you live that life out. You turn to Jesus. You don't turn to self-help. You don't turn to all these. You turn to Jesus and He will walk you through the tough things of life. He said there would be tough things. He said there would be things that are insurmountable. But it's not insurmountable for Him. So if you come to Him... He will get you through it, and he'll be enough. You'll see if you go through things with him. doesn't mean he's going to stop bad things from happening. It means he is going to give you joy in the midst of heartache, and you will know a feeling you've never known because the world can't shake you anymore. Not with Jesus because he's unshakable. Love you guys. Bye.